Shalom. Shalom. How are you today? I am good. Good. Can you say who you are and where are you from? I'm Christine Doster from Tennessee, USA. Wonderful. First time here. Wonderful in Jerusalem. So we're at the Tabernacle of David Prophetic Dance Center. And Chrissy participated in three two-hour classes and then a complimentary one before that, a little bit shorter, of Unlocking Destinies Releasing the River. And I asked Chrissy to do a spontaneous, impromptu interview uh, to share her experience so that we can share about the work and encourage others to step up. So um, you completed the course yesterday. Can I ask you, why don't we start here? What stands out in your mind the most when you think about your experience in the class? Just a freedom to to just be, be who I am, okay. and to respond res, respond to who I dare to believe that God is saying I am, and I've never had quite this. Wonderful. We're just going to go get into more specifics now. So the class started with a long, loving, luxurious warm-up because the floor acts as our partner, so to speak, our springboard. What was this warm-up like for you? I, keep, I just keep, we'll probably keep saying the word freedom because um, we just... It just embraced it. it. Just felt good to stretch and to move, and, and like you would not do ordinarily. Right. So it was out of normal movement, and it was invigorating. And Wonderful. Wonderful. How about all the sounding that we did all throughout the classes? I could. I didn't know how inhibited that I was, and how much I wasn't really willing to let it be and, and let it out. But as the time went on, I just felt like the need to really let it out. That's awesome. I saw tremendous breakthrough. And it's really inspiring to me that I get this honor and privilege to come alongside God's people and help release them into destiny. It's Holy Spirit doing it, but I've said yes to the Lord. So what about nooks and crannies where you're in someone's personal space? How about that? That just, at first, it was really awkward, and then it was just inviting and okay. And I did it with people that I knew and people that I didn't know, and it was okay. I mean, if somebody would have told me that, I would have thought, no, this is not good. Exactly. exactly. That's a consensus to most everybody, whether it be man or woman. Of course, we would have married couples work together, men and men and women with women, because you're crossing over a person's boundary line, so to speak. And the reason we do it it's, it's, it represents being interdependent uh, in the yes. body of Messiah, where we're not like independent, where we're an island unto ourselves, and we're not codependent, where we're overly dependent, but we learn how to shift our weight. We learn how to carry each other's load, so to speak. I like to liken our dance with the Lord, with our life with the Lord. So one kind of spills over into the other, yeah. What was it like for you, the sound scores, where we had no music recordings, and you were actually the music recording for your dancer, your partner? That was also very freeing, because I could just make whatever sound just came to my mind. I felt very free to do that, and it didn't have to make sense. Usually I try to make sense and put it right. together, right. and just let it come out, and it was okay. Just a safe place to let it, it was okay. And what quality of sounds were you making that are the ingredients of dance? What's the slow and continuous? That is a adagio. Beautiful. And how about the fast, fast, faster, fastest? Staccato. You got it. And how about slow and fast together? Um, st yes. Sync. <laughs> Syncopation. Okay. Awesome. Wonderful. Do you remember how many levels we have in dance? Six levels. Awesome. How many body parts? 25. Wonderful. And we worked with a technique whereby we say what we're learning. Do you remember the name? Mm, I call. call and respond. Exactly. Okay. And how about the one where we listen, see, and do? What's the abbreviation? LSD. LSD, right? It's kind of meant to make you chuckle. Listen, see, and do in the spirit. Yeah. The prophetic dance, as I understand it, is simply wanting to dance honestly before God 
bringing forth the heart of the Father like anything in the prophetic. Absolutely. What was it like for you? Or how, let me put it this way. How challenging was it for you to put the properly behaved adult outside and bring forth the child? It's my heart to want to do that and work with children a lot just so they can bring it out of me because they can teach you so much. Yes. And I love, I just love kids' attitudes. And I really have been wanting to free other adults and That's particularly wonderful. women. Just come and have a good time. Just, you know, play a game and just get outside. And so I think that this is just going to help me free up other people too. Although I know there's so much more I could know and so much more that I can develop. But I really am looking forward to the videos that I can take with me. Great. I your new YouTube channel. It's Great. like, yes. Great. Your repetitiveness has been a blessing because you just learn without... Not without, no effort, but just, it's easy, you make it easy to learn. Amen. That's so wonderful. The Lord gave me a word that I was dancing his people into destiny, praying them into destiny, speaking them into destiny. And so that's my passion. And so when we come as a child to our two innate gifts, the voice and the body in motion, as a child, that's the key, shackles fall away and we are thrust forward into our divine supernatural destiny. So I'm so happy to hear that. So how do you feel like just body, mind, soul, and spirit? How do you feel as a whole person after this course? Like, how do you feel? What's your takeaway? What's your takeaway of this experience? Well, this particular experience probably has been one of the number one, um, I will say, instrument used to open my heart in ways that haven't been in years. Wow. I think I even open it to heart, my heart to even trust, like my husband. Wow. That he really cares and to trust wow. that other people really care. Wow. And what yes. they say they need. Yes. And it's a trust thing. And so I can understand I've, I've that. closed myself off to even God and not really even knowing, right. but knowing that that heart just needs to be open and he has such a beautiful way he just met me what I really love which is to dance and be free to Hallelujah. really receive thank you and it's taken it's taken longer than the average bear because I haven't haven't been willing to let that happen but this this right here I mean it's a group of things that have happened but being able to dance I just think there's just going to be more I, I amen don't know why. I don't understand it amen I and you don't have to right you just follow right. him one step at right. a time do you see how critical using your voice has been? Yes, and I also saw how, how uncomfortable it can be, but that's that's just, it, I didn't know it was so close. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, there. you're not unusual in that way. It's totally out of everyone's comfort zone because we've received a message, like in every culture I've worked with, even men into the 90s seemingly, married couples, singles of all ages from all different countries. There's a fear of hearing your own voice. There's a fear of lifting up your voice because it's as if we've all received this message, shh, sit down, shut up. You have nothing of value to say. And it's much more challenging than stepping out in the dance. I truly believe that. How was it for you to dance to the Psalms? How was it for you to dance to the scripture when I was being the orator? Remember in the beginning sessions where I was sharing the Psalms and then allowing space for you to respond with your voice and with your body in motion. What was that like for you? At first, it's a struggle to use my mind. And then just like the one or two key words, you could just act that out. It, it came, but not initially. Like first stepping out, it's like, oh, how do I do this? And so it became more and more easy. And yeah. I really think just I'm learning you can respond to the scripture in many ways. Yeah, that's it's right. one of the ways. That's great. It's like, that is what I want to do because responding is really showing you're alive and God responds yes, to us. That is He's, good. Yeah. That, I, you really hit like a bullseye. We say in Hebrew, dafka, like bullseye, because our part in this dance with God is our responding. Like I wouldn't be in this land if I didn't respond when he said it's time to come home to Israel. So our part, we tend to play it down. It's a huge part. Responding is huge. And it shows that we're alive and we have a full That's beating right. heart. Yeah. And it's been my experience. When you bring, you could be singing to God, but your mind is somewhere else. But when you bring the dance movement, the creative moving into it, you become completely present right here and right now. 
to God, to yourselves, and to others. And that's what God wants. What was it like for you when we did Moving the Telling? It was when you came out, I said enter, you came into the space and you had to project your voice and your voice inspired your movement and your movement inspired your voice. Do you remember we did that? It's called Moving the Telling. We did that a couple of sessions ago. What was it like for you to just create your own story? Well, it it really flowed a lot easier than I thought it was going to. Yes. When I was just free to let it to let it go. I mean, even that I don't remember there being much inhibition at the beginning because it just once I stepped out and just did the first step, yes. the first voice. Yes. That was that was free. Amen. That's a really blessed testimony. And I believe that again, when I'm teaching I want to show that the dance with God is analogous to our life with God. Like one, it overlaps, Baby steps, yeah. you Just know, it, because thing. yes, because that's, and that's the whole thing about the life with the prophetic. You get one prophetic word. Don't belittle one word because once you step out with that one word, whether it's painting or preaching or teaching, whatever, the next word comes and the next word comes. It's like when the Lord has told me to step out, I'm in the service or congregation, step out, move out during worship and the dance. It's like, but I don't know what I'm going to do. And he says, but take the first step. That, I just and even when we go into a work, when we go to worship God, it's like, I don't know what to say, but just, he says, take the first step. That's good. I'll handle the rest of it. It really literally is one step at a time, which is a great dancer pun, you know, one step at a time. Yeah. So we did a lot and I really pushed about the voice because I know the breakthrough comes through lifting up our voice. And then when we bring the movement, like we have a well of movement inside of us and a lot of what we do helps us learn what that well is, tap into that. But when we add our voice, oh my goodness, look out. We are a force to be reckoned with. When you lift up your voice, there is an authority. And then you bring moving praise into it. You're like a weapon. You're a mighty weapon in the hand of God. It's powerful. And I'm delighted to hear that this is gonna help you in your life. Absolutely. And I related to some of the things you shared about trust and just, you know, receiving love and opening your heart. I can relate to all of those things. It's been a process for me. I've always been a giver, but the full circle of love is giving and receiving, yes. right? Yes. God wants us to receive love. Yes. And I prayed a long time ago, many, many years ago, Lord, help me to believe and help me to receive that love from others. So what you said, I think a lot of people will relate to. So is there anything more you want to say about the class, how important you see it is for growth, for healing purposes? Anything else you want to share that men can dance for God, not just for women, you know? Is there anything you want to say uh, about people stepping out into the dance worship well, with I'm the boys? I'm in a group of, and every single girl I have said, and not only because there's no other men, the one man that was there it, it did come to the dance class and loved it. So uh, every person that I've come in contact with, even a few people that I met just recently, I recommended it because Amen. it's just Thank you. So I, I, I don't, and so most of them are come are coming. Yes, 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 absolutely. So and I thank you for that. Just, they're just hearing. Um, what we have to say without trying to tell them too much because right <laughs> so, right um, right let them experience it on their yeah. own right show up. and there's something you said before about you use the word bear like you're a late bear or something like that like <laughs> right like I sometimes I use the word a late bloomer right yes, yes that's but right. what came to mind when I heard you say that is that you're writing God's timetable and this this uh, tabernacle of David prophetic dance center is an end times vision I had a birth it in for 10 and a half years, very painful. But it's because it's an end times vision. It's not that God was late. We were perfectly in his timetable. So you, you know, we're not ready until we're ready. And when God is ready to remove that veil, whatever it is, that revelation, it's his perfect timing, you know, because you wouldn't have been ready before for all of us with everything. And you've encouraged me in that way today about that as well. That's confirmation. Hallelujah. Can I ask you what you're doing here in Israel? I mean, we know this was part of the plan, but why Israel? I, it's the first time. I've always wanted to come. I have things of Israel in my home. I have Jewish people at home, but I've never traveled here. And I really haven't traveled anywhere in the last 20 years. I live in a small town. And the opportunity arose 
it was just a couple a week before we were supposed to come. And I can't really say <clears throat> exactly why, but I've come to know it's just to see the people face to face. Wow. To see what they really are thinking. Wow. How it's really affected them. Wow. I don't believe everything that I see in good. On TV. Oh, that's good. And the just the people have come in contact with, and then I cannot tell you the the kindness and the openness, and they just said thank you for showing up, and it's like wow. Yeah, I have done some beautiful. things like go to a kibbutz and help and pick avocados. Oh, that beautiful! Was, um, that was like icing on the cake. It wasn't it was just saying even if you even if you just showed up. And it's like, then they just soften. First they're puzzled, and then they're just softened. Like, thank you for showing up. Amen. And so I just showed Amen. up. And Amen. I have been blessed more than I've been a blessing. But I've come to love the people here. I mean, really, friendship. I've developed friendships yes. here. Yes. So I'm planning I know on we have. Yes. possibly staying longer, even though wow. I'm supposed to leave wow. today. Wow. So okay. I'm going to go, to go for a week and decide if that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay. And my husband says, yes, if that's what you're supposed to do, stay. So that's wonderful. Yeah. So, um, Chrissy, we want to bless you now. If you just want to lift your hands to heaven, we want to release a blessing. And I want to ask the people that are watching that they're going to agree in prayer, and I'm sure that they will. So I just want to release the priestly blessing, the also known as the Aaronic blessing. The Lord bless you, Chrissy, and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The lift, Lord lift up his countenance yes. upon you and give you his shalom. B'shem Yeshua Mishikainu in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. Thank you, Chrissy, for sharing your experience. Oh, my pleasure. God bless you, sweetheart, from Jerusalem with love.